The Orlando Magic, we're not perfect Sunday. And that's kind of the point. How the Orlando Magic are leveling up once again, or a new way they've leveled up. It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is February 6, 2023. My name is Philip Ross and I'm the expert insight editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic defeat the Charlotte Hornets and do something interesting and new and exciting or boring, I don't know, in the process. We'll get to how the Magic have leveled up again as they match last year's win total. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's podcast is sponsored by our friends at Prize Picks. First time users, can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. If there is a theme for the second half of the Orlando Magic season, that theme is consistency. I have said that word so many times. It is a theme that I hit on a bunch. We feel this Magic team has, has, has successfully, as Coach Mosley put it uh, in the offseason, leveled up. We feel this team has reached a new plateau, a new stage. We, you know, when, when, when the character dies, we reset to a new, we don't reset all the way back to the start. We're resetting to, the, to, the, to, to, to a different level for my, for my gamers out there. Um, this team has accomplished a lot already this season. That's... That's the main takeaway. That's the main thing to get out of it. This Magic team has done a lot. And of course, there's still more to do. But but it's still a fight. It's still a struggle for this young team to be consistent. To do the same thing over and over again. To have one area go wrong, but make up for it in other areas. And still find a way to win. This is the theme for the season. And as most Magic fans would complain, and and even some of the numbers show, while the Magic are capable of beating the Boston Celtics, the Golden State Warriors, some of the best teams in the league, this is still a team that's capable of losing to the Houston Rockets, nearly getting swept by the Houston Rockets, losing twice to the Detroit Pistons, losing, losing to some of the worst teams in the league. So the Magic have work to do. And look, These are young team problems. Inconsistency is what young teams do. They get up for the big games. They don't show up for the bad games. Welcome to being a 500 team. Welcome being to a young 500 team that doesn't understand how to win yet. And so, looking at this game against Charlotte, the worst team, one of the worst teams in the league by 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 record in, in the league, looking at this game against Charlotte, this felt like a trap game. Afternoon start on a Sunday, end of a road trip, a successful road trip with two wins already in their back pocket. This felt like a game where you could see that inconsistency creep in. You could see this team struggle. And boy, did they struggle early on. Uh, Going down by 10 early as Charlotte made some tough shots. Orlando turned the ball over. They looked a step slow. They looked tired. You know, looked a little lackadaisical. But this is where this team has grown. None of that mattered in the end. It was a frustrating bit. And sure, I think one of the big complaints I saw from Magic fans in the aftermath of the game was that Orlando didn't turn their 9-point lead into a 15-point lead. Instead, it hovered around 8, 6, 7 points, sometimes 5 maybe, uh, before Orlando finally kind of pulled away and Charlotte just couldn't 
get back in the game, as, as, as our friends at Locked On Hornets will probably note. Missed free throws were a big, big key to that. Mason Plumlee missed a ton. JT Thor missed a ton. Strategic fouling from the Magic, perhaps. But, uh, look, this was not the Magic's best game. They did a lot of things well. We're going to get into some of those here in a minute. But this was not the Magic's best game. And yet, they won. Maybe with some nerviness, maybe not as comfortably as we'd like, but the Magic controlled this game essentially from the second quarter to the very end. Yeah, Charlotte took the lead in the third quarter, but Orlando quickly answered back. And so when I talk about consistency, this is what I talk about. I, 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 I know I say this a lot on this pod. The regular season is about what can you do every night no matter what. What can you do on your worst nights? What can you do on a random Tuesday in January, a Sunday afternoon in February when you're tired and you don't have it? How do you push through? How do you persevere? How do you get wins when everything's working against you? What do you rely on to do that? That was the question presented by this game against Charlotte. A 119-113 win, by the way. I should get the score in there. That's what was presented by this game against Charlotte. The Magic had every reason to fold. The Magic had every reason to feel sluggish. Uh, The Magic played a little bit like they were in mud early on. Paolo Bancaro continues to go through a a prolonged shooting slump. You know, no matter what anyone says, he's he's hitting the rookie wall. He's, He's struggling a little bit right now. But he and everyone else on the roster figured it out. They found a way. They got the job done. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters because a six-point win is the same as a 20-point win. And when we look at what's important to how this team is developing, yes, eventually they got to learn how to put these teams away. That's a step ahead. That's a step ahead. For now, what this team did on Sunday afternoon was show that grit, determination, perseverance, that teams have to have to win consistently in this league. The Magic have played as a better than 500 team since December. So we're getting used to this winning thing. This winning thing isn't weird anymore. They're 17 and 12, 17 and 11 um, in their last 30, you know, nearly 30 games now. Winning has become regular and normal and a habit. But these are the games that young teams have to learn how to win. They have to learn how to take care of their business when their star goes 6 for 20 from the floor. Well, you know, how did Paolo Bancaro do that? He burrowed his way into the paint for 11 points in the third quarter, got 10 rebounds, got 5 assists, found a way to contribute even with the defenses loading up against him. How did the Magic kind of keep their wits? Well, Markel Fultz just controlled the pace of this game completely. When he wanted it to speed up, it sped up. When he wanted to slow it down, it slowed down. And minus, minus again, maybe like a two, or, two, two or three minute pockets where LaMelo Ball was able to get up and down or Terry Rozier hit shots in the first quarter, the Hornets were scrambling to deal with the Magic's defense. And yeah, Orlando lost some of their defensive focus at times, but a quick timeout reeled it back in. They, they were threatened but never, never overwhelmed. And the Magic controlled the pace of this game throughout. That's how you win games. That's what good teams do to, again, apologies to our good friends at Locked on Hornets. That's what, good te- that's, what te- that's what good teams do to the worst teams in the league. We've been on the other end of that so many times where we're just scratching and clawing just to stay in it. And even our best is not enough. Hornets certainly will not say that, but it's important to note then that the Magic have reached a new level. I talked about this a few times that, you know, the goal this year was to level up, as Jamal Mosley put it. Well, I would say we've accomplished that already. Congratulations, shake hands, you know, 22, we matched last year's win total. Everyone celebrate a little bit. But this team is ready to take that next level up. And, you know, I've sat here on this podcast and and said several times, you know, the Magic have five or six things or six or seven things they need to do to win. They need to do five or six of them to win. 
we're hitting a point where the Magic have six or seven things they need to do to win, and they only need to do four or five of them. The margin for error is increasing. They can make mistakes. They can do poor things. They could experiment a little bit and still make up for it. You probably notice the Magic are trying some of those three-guard lineups out. Uh, with Jalen Suggs suspended for this game, they, they threw Caleb Houston in there. He was a huge boost, some great... Uh, calls from Jamal Mosley to get him going, and and and, and great way for the uh, for the rookie to step up. Um, you know the Magic turned the ball over a little bit too much in this game. They obviously didn't shoot the ball particularly well. Charlotte shot better than fifty percent from the floor. There were a lot of things the Magic did wrong in this game, and we're going to dive into the box score here in a minute and highlight some of those things. There were a lot of things the Magic did wrong in this game. But the Magic still came out on top. The Magic still won what ultimately matters, and that's the final score. We're not going to judge. Obviously, the results aren't, you know, the results are everything, but they're not everything. Um, the process matters here. And so, what this game shows, what this game exemplifies for this young team, is that. They can find a way. And yeah, it's Charlotte. You could get away with a lot more against Charlotte. No offense again to our friends at Lockdown Hornets. You could get away get away with a lot more against Charlotte than you can against New York, who the Magic face on Tuesday. If you do some of these mistakes against New York, New York's going to punish you. New York's obviously a different team. They're much slower paced. Orlando's going to have to find a way to pick up the pace, whereas in this game, Orlando's trying to find a way to slow it down a little bit. Um, each team presents its own challenges. But the Magic rose to the challenge in this one. Everything going on with them and everything the Hornets presented. And even with their shots not falling, even with both their stars, Paolo Bencaro and Franz Wagner, struggling to shoot again, even with everything working against them, this Magic team found a way to win again. And that's the part that's exciting for this group, is that they can do it. We're going to go through the final box score, talk a little bit about the performances from this one. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our friends at Prize Picks. Look, it is the week of the big game. There's so much going on. Trade deadline for the NBA. You just want a daily fantasy game. You just want to enjoy a night's game without all the noise around you. Well, you want to enjoy it with a little, little, little piece of it in there, too. That's why prize picks should be your go-to daily fantasy sports game. Instead of worrying about playing against 20,000 other people, hoping that you just get your money back, prize picks is literally just you versus the numbers. It's a great way to get involved in the game, have a little have a little 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 bit little action in it, uh, and and uh, and play a game that truly tests your skill uh, uh, to predict what's going to happen. Here's how the game works. You pick two to six players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So if you think Paolo Bancaro will top 20 points on Tuesday against the New York Knicks, you can go ahead and tell, say that he's going to do more. If you think that Jalen Brunson is going to have fewer than six assists, I don't know if that's the actual number, but it's just an example, you can say he will have fewer than six assists. It's really that easy. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus projections available. And PrizePix offers projections on any sport that you watch, including NBA, NFL, NHL, PGA, Monday finish today, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, and so much more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. They have safe and fast withdrawals and are currently operational in more than 30 states, including here in Florida and Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That means if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Before we dive into the box score. It's that week, folks. NBA trade deadline week. It's approaching and Locked On has you covered. We're going to get to some deadline stuff here at the end of the show. Thursday, February 9th, tune into Locked On NBA on YouTube at 2 Eastern time to hear reactions from the trades that will change the rest of the NBA season. Who becomes contenders and who is tanking for a better future? Subscribe to Locked On NBA on YouTube and don't miss a deal and don't miss our live show at 2 Eastern time on Thursday. Uh, I... 
I'm planning to do maybe a pre-deadline thing on Wednesday. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm still sorting some things out. Um, but we may, I may do a pre-deadline uh, live on Wednesday to preview the preview the trade deadline a little bit. Well, we'll I'm going to start working some lives back in here very shortly on my end. But two o'clock Eastern time. Thursday, Locked on NBA YouTube page, definitely a trade deadline show. If the Magic do anything, I will pop in on there and explain what's going on, even if it's something very, very minor. All right, let's go through the final box scores. The Orlando Magic defeat the Charlotte Hornets 119-113 and, and an, a great afternoon showing from the Orlando Magic. Again, these afternoon games are tricky. I know Charlotte's also going through it too, but you don't see a lot of afternoon games. It does usually take, it usually takes one team a little while to get going. It certainly took the Magic a little while to get going, but... This was a game that the Magic, you know, were... It was an odd game. Just just a really strange little game um, where the Magic, again, did not did not do everything right. Um, you know, again, you just you have to just go through the box score and you can find the things. Charlotte shot 54.2% from the floor and 12 for 33 from beyond the arc. Lamella Ball was 6 for 13 from 3 for 33 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. That's, that's usually a game that Charlotte wins. That's usually a game that Charlotte's able to really kind of dominate because LaMelo Ball is not a great three-point shooter. He's a capable three-point shooter. But when he hits threes like that, it's usually lights out for, for a team. Um, it's, it was not a great game defensively for Orlando, but again, they do enough. They forced 15 turnovers for 21 points, so they got themselves out in transition. They got fast break points. They scored seven to Charlotte's 19, so they you know didn't win that battle, but they were able to get out in transition a little bit. Um... Really, this game was won in the paint. Orlando outscored Charlotte 62 to 56 in the paint, outscored Charlotte 20 to 9 in second chance points. 18 offensive rebounds to 8 for Charlotte. That's how you make up a shooting difference. Because Orlando shot just 46.2% from the floor, but they took eight more, eight more field goal attempts. They they only they made three fewer field goals than them, made four fewer threes. The big difference was at the foul line. Orlando 27 for 30 from the foul line. They really converted at the foul line. Charlotte just 11 for 23. Mason Plumley missed all four of his. JT Thor was one for four. That makes up, what, seven of those 12 misses. Um, Charlotte left a lot of points at the foul line. That's probably what they're regretting most. Although, I, I, I think that, well, yes, Charlotte missed a lot of those free throws. The Magic were in control of this one and, and really was a wild fourth quarter where Charlotte hit a bunch of shots. Um, but they still got outscored 29-28 in that quarter. So Orlando, Orlando's defense was good enough, especially in the second quarter, to give them the lead. It was good enough for them to maintain it. Again, that's the thing. That's that's my big thing, is play this kind of defense. You know, they, they, they played three quarters of defense this game, played three quarters of defense against Minnesota, three quarters of defense against Philadelphia. That's actually kind of weirdly enough for them to win, as long as it's not too crazy, as long as the deficit's not too crazy. This Magic team is capable of, of getting back into games. And, and again, that is a step up. Like I, like I said, like I say this all the time, I, I used to say this all the time, you know, the Magic had six or seven things they got to do right. They got to do five or six of them right to win. Now we're down to like four or five of those things. So, you know, I, I went through points in the paint. They won that barely. They got outshot from the three-point line, but they, you know, eight for 23 from threes, you know, not a great number, but that's, you know, the Magic aren't jacking up threes. It's usually a good sign for them. You know, we could you, you could go through these box score segments and I will look at the same kind of things and say, okay, that's a big thing. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. Those are the things that I look at on the box score. The Magic did most of those in this game, although not as dominant as maybe they should have. Um, you know, losing fast breaks, that's a big one. You know, 12 turnovers, 13 points. Each one of those turnovers felt big, but Orlando, again, just was solid enough to win. And, and that's that's ultimately what matters. Paolo Bacaro ends up leading the team in scoring. 6 for 20 shooting, 0 for 4 from deep, 10 for 11 from the foul line. He's missed his last 12 three-pointers. Um, but 10 rebounds, 5 assists for Paolo. Um, I really enjoyed this game from Paolo. Um, he is forcing his shots a little bit. Uh, he's not getting foul calls that he might have gotten earlier in the season. I think he's he's a little frustrated by that. He still got to the line 11 times, which tells you a lot. Um, he's trying to get downhill. He's not settling for shots. He knows the shots out there. He's not afraid to take open threes when he gets them. So, I think all the elements are there. I think that he is, the season's worn him down a little bit. I, I think this is the rookie wall, kids. Um, you know, it's it's a lot. Eighty two games is a lot. I, I don't think people appreciate that. He kind of he kind of hit the wall a little bit at game thirty. Burst through that. Kind of got found his rhythm again for a little bit. Now he's kind of back like in the mud a little bit. Um. All-Star Weekend is going to be good for him. I'm, he's going to go to Salt Lake City, obviously. He's going to have a great time. 
uh, in the rookie game. I'm sure he'll stay for Saturday festivities just to get some business done. Then I imagine he's going home. He's going to go back to Seattle for a few days. Uh, that's going to be really helpful for him. Um, you know, again, that, we'll dive into this next week. This team needs All Star Weekend. There, there are a lot of guys that are hurting right now that just need need to break. You know, Wendell Carter talked about it a little bit after the game. Wendell Carter, a great game by the way, twenty points, twelve rebounds, seven for twelve shooting, two for four from deep. He got a game off. He got a day off um, against Minnesota Timberwolves. That seemed to do wonders for him. You know, he just looked a little bit more springy, looked a little bit more uh, energetic, you know, just a little bit better on his spots. If there's any dude that needs an all-star break and needs just to get off his feet, and, and he said this, you know, uh, we're, I'm just trying to get to the all-star break. Then during the break, I'm going to get as much treatment as I can get to make that plantar fascia injury, uh, you know, more tolerable. Um, it's going to be good. It, it, it's good. I think this team... I think this team, and, and you could say this probably about a lot of teams, I think there are a lot of players on this team who are not playing at their full potential because they are struggling with injuries. And I think I think uh, the All-Star Breaks could refresh this team a ton. Uh, Franz Wagner, 14 points, 5 for 16 shooting, 2 for 5 from deep, 6 rebounds. Um, kind of a nondescript game from Franz. He hit a couple shots later in the game. He's trying these really difficult flip shots, which he can hit. But I, I'd like to see him kind of make some of those shots a little easier. Um, you know, I, I think I think developing a mid-range game, he's earned the right to the mid-range. Um, developing more of a mid-range game is going to help him out a ton too. He just he just needs to to, to find a way to mix things up because teams are playing him for the drive and defending his drives really well, and he's just so skilled at getting around people that he could still get off decent-looking shots and, and shots that he can make. Um, but uh, again, get to the foul line more. He's not getting to the foul line nearly as much as he he was earlier in the season. Get to the foul line more. Uh, hit, hit a couple mid-range jumpers to loosen the defense up a little bit. Um, but, you know, he's still contributing in a lot of areas. Three fo- three offensive rebounds. Um, just a solid, you know, solid effort from him. Um, Markel Fultz, uh, just, again, he was the key to this game. 16 points, 8 for 13 shooting, 5 assists. He did have 3 turnovers, so a little sloppy with the ball at times. But Markel Fultz really controlled the pace of this game. Um, you know, the stats aren't going to show this, Um you know, but he he's able to hit his jumper like he's very comfortable hitting that little mid range jumper. Uh, you know, he can get to the basket when he needs to. He's he's got deceptive speed, but he's just so good at at getting this team to the pace they need to play at. Um, whether it's getting out in transition, he's going to get the ball up the court quickly. Um, if the team needs to slow down, if they need to catch their breath, if they need if the game's a little hectic, he'll be the one to get the ball pause for a minute and kind of let everyone get into their spots and then get them back up up to speed and get them back going. Um, Markel Fultz does point guard things that do not show up in a box score. Like, I, I cannot point to a stat that tells you what impact Markel Fultz had in this game. And that's that's the truth. Um, I, I am... I am really impressed with Markel Fultz right now and, 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 and the things that he's done. And, and so, I... I uh, again, like it's it's just really solid. This was a really really solid game from him. Um, off the bench, not a whole lot off the bench this game. Cole Anthony had nine, four for eight shooting. He continues to play very very well. Uh, kind of help pace this team. Not not at the extent that he did in pre in a couple previous games, but nine point effort off the bench is pretty good for Cole. Um, Caleb Houston a surprise off the bench, eight points, three for four shooting. Really solid game from him. Hit a couple big threes. Um, you know, good good faith in the rookie really showed what what how much more comfortable he is. You know, I, I do think one of the I think the magic of two goals really at this trade deadline that is free up a roster spot so they could sign Kevon Harris to a full contract so they don't have to worry about um, worry about him and and the two way contract and then find way to get Caleb Houston more minutes. He's, he played twelve minutes in this game, essentially playing Jalen Suggs minutes. Marco Fultz helped fill, fill a lot of those two. He played thirty six in this game, almost thirty six in this game. Um, but uh, a lot to a lot to like about Caleb Houston's game. Uh, you got to give a special shout out to Bull Bull. Eight points, three for five shooting. Did Bull Bull things. You know, had two turnovers. You know, you know, a little wild in the open court. You know, I I, I would still say he needs to recognize when to move the ball. But you know, he was able to get downhill. And when Bull Bull is getting downhill, um, he becomes a really dangerous player. He becomes a fun, exciting player. Um, so we got a good bull bull in this one, as as David Steele said on the broadcast. The bowler coaster was uh, was definitely in in effect there. Uh, again, the Magic shoot just forty six point two percent from floor, eight for twenty three from beyond the arc, twenty seven for thirty from the foul line. That's how they made up the difference. They got to the foul line. They really put pressure on Charlotte. They got offensive rebounds. Eighteen of them really saved this game. So Orlando, you know, again, you look for little hustle points. 
Orlando got a lot of hustle points in this game, a lot of bell plays. That's really what kind of set this team apart and helped them take control and keep control of the game. Their defense led the energy. Their defense led the way. And even though they gave up a ton of points, even though they gave up 113 points, even though they gave up 54% shooting, uh, even though Charlotte got a little bit hot from beyond the arc toward the end of the game, um, Orlando was able to maintain composure and control. And that's, again, a really impressive thing for this young team. The Magic defeat the Charlotte Hornets 119-113. to 113. They open a three-game homestand coming up on Tuesday against New York Knicks. We'll get to some trade deadline stuff coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word for our pals at Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all the fat and calories? Well, then you got to try Built Bar. We just got through the holidays. I know my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year. So if you're like me, where you want to eat healthier, but don't want to compromise taste, then you got to try Built Bar. Like seriously. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate, not fake chocolate, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. I'm really not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they are healthy. Only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can thank me later. Check them out today at Walmart, Sam's Club, or of course at Built.com. Built Bars, the Built the Protein bar that tastes like a chocolate bar. Try them out today. I would be remiss if we didn't get to the news of the day. Um, Obviously, uh, the whole NBA world is talking about uh, the trade that is not official as of the recording, but will be very soon. The Brooklyn Nets trading Kyrie Irving to the Dallas Mavericks uh, for Dorian Finney-Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, and three uh, future picks, including a future first-round pick. Um... First off, um, the Magic had no interest in Kyrie Irving. Uh, I don't think that the Magic were ever in the running or ever probably seriously considered it. Uh, obviously, whenever an elite player enters enters the conversation or enters the rumor mill, you have to discuss it. You have to go through your paces and, and make your decisions. But I, I think that's a fairly easy decision. Um, the Magic are not going to be in the business of taking on expiring contracts unless they're players that they're confident they can resign um, or want to resign or players who want to resign with them. So, you know, a, a lot of that gets into, you know, the Magic have been rumored to be chasing after Gary Trent Jr., who will be a free agent this summer, chasing after Fred Van Vliet, who will be a free agent this summer. Um, a lot of that calculation is, do we want to just get him now, have him in-house, and 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 sign, and sign give him bird rights and sign him that way? Or do we just want to wait till the offseason and sign him then? Because we will have the money to sign any a lot of these players. You know, Fred Van Vliet might be a little trickier because he's, Looking for a salary starting at $30 million, which is kind of the baseline uh, cap number for the Magic next year, but uh, and I'm not advocating for that. Let me be clear. Um, but that's part of the consideration. Kyrie Irving was not that guy. Kyrie Irving would not stay in Orlando. This is not the place he's looking to be. He's not looking to be on a rebuilding team. He wants to be on a team that is ready-made to win and has their star in place. And granted, we have Paolo Bancaro, who's a really nice player, but culturally just not a good fit. We're not at the point where we have a star who could stand up to Kyrie Irving and say, get your get your stuff together. Um, Kevin Durant couldn't even do that. And you could kind of feel, you could feel Kevin Durant's frustration over it um, right now. The Magic aren't in that situation. They need, you know, character guys. It's a big thing for this, this front office. Um, it's moot now. It's done. It's over. Let's move on. But I bring this up and I talk a little bit about this because there is a domino effect to everything that happens. Uh, and, and that's really the point that needs to be made today. The Kyrie Irving trade, when Kyrie Irving, you know, when it reported, made the trade request and that hit the, hit the press and hit everything, that pauses everything around the league. Because now, you know, a, a favorite Magic fan trade, um, fake trade that's, that's come about, is to try and get Luke Kennard from the LA Clippers, you know, trading Terrence Ross from Obama for Luke Kennard. The salaries match. The numbers work there. There's a framework there. Um, 
the Magic, you know, to, to do that deal, the Clippers are probably going to go through a lot of other iterations first. And so when Kyrie Irving get the market, the Clippers suddenly are in the Kyrie Irving sweepstakes. So trade discussions over, you know, they need Luke Kennard for that trade. They got to wait. The fact of the matter is, and one of the reasons why I think it's going to be difficult for the Magic to find a, a really good deal or a deal that they really like or a deal that fans are going to get really excited about at this deadline is because the assets the Magic have to offer are pretty far down the list. Let's just take Mo Bamba, for example. A, Mo Bamba is not really playing a ton, so that's part of it, although you're starting to see a lot of other players around the league who are reportedly on the trade market begin to sit. You know, Kyrie Irving sat a few games before his trade. Uh, Bones Highland didn't play last night in a game that the Nuggets were down a lot of guys. Teams are starting to to, to kind of protect assets that they might be looking to move. Um, but you look at the center market specifically, and Mo Bamba's pretty far down the list. There are a lot of teams that need centers. The LA Clippers are certainly one. The Boston Celtics uh, seem to be one. They seem to be looking for a backup big. Um, there are plenty of teams looking, you know, for a guy like, for, for potentially what the Magic have in Mo Bamba. But getting a deal done is much trickier because Mo Bamba is probably behind Yaka Pertle, who's probably the number one guy on this trade market among big men. He's probably behind Jared Vanderbilt from the Utah Jazz, who, you know, again, I, I'm not wholly sold that Utah will deal him, but there's that. He's behind a few players. You know, maybe Nerlens Noel. He might be behind Nerlens Noel from Detroit. He's behind a few players. And Detroit's also looking for a backup center. Nerlens Noel hasn't really worked. Mo Bamba's probably not going to work there either. Um, but he's behind a few players. And so if the Magic are looking to make a deal, a lot of these teams are going to go to San Antonio first before they come to Orlando. And so the trade deadline is not just about buyers and sellers. It's a domino effect. It's waiting for all the dominoes to fall to get to you before you you, you go. And that's why, you know, obviously Kyrie kind of shifted everything. Because he's just, I mean, basketball-wise, he's a stupendous player. Other stuff-wise, a headache. But basketball-wise, a stupendous player. And now everyone's back to waiting on the Toronto Raptors. Nothing this trade deadline is going to get done until the Toronto Raptors decide what they're going to do. If they make OG Ananobi available, everyone's going to make everyone of consequence is going to make their offers for OG Ananobi first. If they make Fred Van Vliet available, the Magic will be in the running. And I think the Magic, if they want Fred Van Vliet, could make a, a competitive offer, or they could just wait for free agency, which is what I think they should do anyway. The the Magic, they the teams will make their offer for Fred Van Vliet, and then move on to other pieces when they are eliminated, when they're out of the running. That's how this deadline's going to work. It's going to be about waiting for the dominoes to fall. And so obviously you do your work, you have your frameworks in place, and you just have to be able to get deals done quickly if you're going to get deals done. But this is the tricky part that the Magic are in. Outside of Gary Harris, who I I just don't think the Magic are making as readily available as everyone thinks. I I think the reporting is the Magic, uh, that everyone's hoping the Magic make Gary Harris readily available, but... Uh, the Magic are very clearly asking for a first for him at minimum, if not more. And not not a like bad first. They want a quality first. They want you know probably lottery protected at, at minimum for Gary Harris because he's really good and he's really helpful for this team. Um, but Terrence Ross, I don't think he's moving the needle on the market. Mo Bamba is certainly not moving the needle on the market. There are probably teams hoping that the Magic will just take a couple seconds for them at this point. And with Ross, the Magic might end up just doing that to, to, to help Terrence and to, to, again, accomplish their goal of freeing up a roster spot. But the Magic have to wait their turn. And so they just have to be ready to act quickly if that's what they want to do. Like I said, I, I think the offseason is going to be the time to make deals. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still anticipating a very quiet trade deadline for the Orlando Magic because of all this. We got a couple days to go, so we will see. And we'll talk more trade deadline on tomorrow's episode, on our next episode of Lock the Magic. may not be tomorrow, but on our next episode. 
But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, follow me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Hit your tune in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places to the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, make sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can, of course, follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to make your second listen game to game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.